Hi everyone, it's Stacy with Stacy's Ritzy DP Crafts. How y'all doing today? Um, it's Friday. I am going to be uploading this today. Um, I've got other videos I do have to edit, but um, this one will definitely get uploaded. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I do do diamond painting and now I'm doing beaded cross stitch and or embroidery, beaded embroidery, cross stitch, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I also do crochet, which I haven't really crocheted anything lately because um, I, I need to do a blanket and a poncho and I don't know who what, what else. But anyway, that's besides the point. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm actually doing today the beauty cross stitch. I'm doing this beautiful flower. Um, this was the color chart I'm working with. And what I went ahead and did, just to give you guys some tips, because I did get back to the company, and um, I had a concern on the legend over here matching this legend, and just in case this happens to any of you, because this is the first project I've had, um, I did want to let you know that these colors coordinate with the image itself on here and so what I went ahead and did was I took the codes from the legend on the back okay so I, I have to cross out so I know where I'm at but these legends I matched it up to here and then I put the letter here on this legend over here so you can see where I put my C's and threes so I can color match it easier um, because it was getting too much and this is just a quick reference so it's more efficient for me um, so yeah so I just wanted to give you guys that idea if you're new to this because I'm super new and I'm still learning things as I go um, yeah so give me just a second okay so this is from new craft day and I will put the product link and the website link below so you guys have it um, and just to get this out, um, if you do Stacy 10, S-T-A-C-Y with a capital S and then numerical 10, 1, 0, um, you guys can save 10%. I would definitely give it a try. I absolutely am loving this. I haven't diamond painted since I started this. I'll be perfectly honest. Oops, see, I forgot to put in a thing. But I haven't diamond painted since I started this um, just because it's... Um, one, it's a little hard to store the drills for me right now because I don't actually have a beaded container. I'm using my trays. <laughs> so I use my diamond painting trays to put my beads in and it works perfectly. Um, but I think a beaded tray would be better because it'll have a lid and I can cap it up. Um, it's not really a transportable. Oops, I'm just gonna do it this way. You can't really do this while you're tra while you're traveling, but once you get where you're going, you can definitely do it. Pack everything up in beaded containers, and you'll be good to go. Um, have I lost my needle a few times? I've lost both needles at the same within like ten minutes of each other because um, they fell off of my thread because I don't tie a major knot to it, um, and I had to go looking like a needle in a haystack with my floor but I was able to find one of them. I still can't find the other one. The one that I had was actually, I messed that one up. The one that I had was actually underneath my dog's bed in my shoe. So yeah, I don't know how that happened and I'm struggling here. So this is like beginner struggles. <laughs> um, but it's normally very easy to pop in your thing and get that out. If I can remember, I think this is the wrong way though. Hold on, I gotta figure out. And my string is my little string is getting smaller now. Hold on one second. I gotta focus, guys. I gotta focus to do this. Come on. Alright, hold on. Where's my tweezers? I know I have my diamond painting tweezers somewhere. Alright, if all else fails, this is just not working right now. What's up with that? Alright, let me try going in the other way. Maybe I just have it in wrong. If not, I'm going to take my needle off. But sometimes I forget to put a bead on. And then I have to figure out how to reverse it. Back it up. Frog it. Reverse it. Alright, let's see if that's going to take it. Yeah, there we go. I was just going in the wrong hole. Yeah, okay. 
we won't go there. But anyway, um, I don't even know where I was. I got so distracted. But any, um, yeah, new craft day. Um, so yeah, check out what they have. They've got um, regular cross stitch. They've got beaded cross stitch, little projects, um, medium sized projects, and um, diamond paintings as well. Um, just with the diamond paintings, I would just recommend making sure they're stock photos or um, licensed. I don't think they'd be licensed. I, you know what? Do what you want. I'm not. I'm not the the copyright police, even though I'm an artist. Um, I know personally, I would not want my stuff on any site without being licensed. So as an artist, I'm going to go ahead and say that. And as a business owner for Diamond Paintings, we, I'm going to say that as well. <laughs> Get stuff that's licensed. But understandably, um, I don't really, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, I know I just don't want to see my stuff or any of the artists that I'm personal with, um, having their, sh or any artist period, having their stuff, um, being sold without permission. Um, but anyway, that's neither here nor there, right? Not for me to judge anyone. Um, but as you can see, I've gotten pretty far on this. I've been doing this for almost a week. I think I'm in day six right now. So it does, it's not going to be like a diamond painting. Oh, I can get a whole row done. No, this has taken me like six days constantly working on it um, because I do it while I work in between calls and I do it when I'm not working my RPC job. So, yeah. Um, but it's nice, it's fun, and it's coming out awesome. Um, I have seen a few people. I am so happy that I inspired a few people to get out their kits that they have. And oh my god, I'm so happy for you guys. Um, it just makes me happy when people can join along and do what I'm doing. And just have fun with me. So, you know, if you're on my Facebook group, um, or my Facebook group, Huh? You can do it on my personal page. I really don't. Just tag me if you are. I want to see what everybody's working on. I want to know where you guys got your stuff from because I'm always up to trying new things. I want to try a bigger kit um, or maybe a full image, but I know, oh my God, that's going to take like a really long time to do. And I've got art I have to get out. I haven't done art pretty much all summer. Um, I've got a company that's been waiting for stuff that I have to do. I've got another company I just re-released a bunch of stuff to and also gave some new images and like all the businesses that I work with are going to be linked below. But I need to get more art out for sure, especially right now because it's fall. I've got some cute stuff. I, I kind of changed up my way that I have my things set up so that I'm I want to create more not so busy images, if that makes sense, like cleaner images. And I'm just kind of going for a more basic style, um, I think. So I want to see how those come out once I'm done editing them. And then I'll be releasing. I don't know where I'll release to, but we'll see. And I'll post on Facebook where they're released to once I get them. Um... But yeah, so that's why I've been a little bit quiet. Plus, I've been, oh my gosh, I've been working so hard with the RPC Rose Profit Creations website. <gasps> like, that's my baby. Um, from the videos that I do to the, um, what are they, blogs that I try and keep up with, which I don't really do a good job because I'm not a blogger. Um, but I do little blog updates through there. And then I do all the pricing, I load all the images, and yeah, so right now we are going through a price decrease with a lot of our standard sizes, so I've just, I'm just doing, you know, I always do a little business update, I won't deal with it long. Um, so I'm currently working on Libby's and Rose's right now, everyone else is pretty much done. Um, so we were able, on a lot of our standard sizes, we were able to get the prices down, um, some of those prices have come down drastically, so you will notice that when I do the um, Doctor Who video for the Doctor Who images, because I know Rose has her panels that we wanted to get out, 
So I'm going to be doing that. And then um, I think the next release, I've got to get some Aceras in there. And then the next release, I think, is just going to be Rose and Me. Um, all the artists right now are kind of taking a little bit of a break, which is great because it gives them a chance for us to promote the stuff that's already on the website. So, um, yeah, so just stay tuned. Lots and lots of positive changes. Um, we're not doing the Doctor, or Rose isn't doing the Doctor Who event, but we are going to, I am going to try and keep it Doctor Who themed for that month. Just, you know, look it out for her and just, I know there's a lot of Doctor Who fans, so we'll see what we can do. Or Libby will, um, depending what her situation is, but... Either Libby or I will post stuff on the website. Um, but yeah, so anyway, um, I wanted to show you guys another trick um, in regards to these. So the first trick is store your beads in a diamond painting tray like I did. And these, I think, go over there. I'm not sure, but they're so close in color, I'll figure out what I need to. Um, so I keep those in the trays. Um... And then the other thing is, is that, do you see how, not that, because I have to sew that back down, but I had one of the things in here was a loosey-goosey. Oh, see how this is a loosey-goosey? So if you want to tighten up your beads, um, I'm going to have to do this from the back. I'm going to tighten things up from the back, but what you can do, I'll show you real quick. Um, let me try and zoom in more so you guys can see it. So what I do is I'll go in and say like my, my thread is over here right now. I'll, I'll hold my end of the thread and I'll show you on my other one. But I'll go through and I'll just lift up here and then I'll just lift up here and I'll just keep tightening it as it go. So um, if you see, I just finished this row. So what I'll do is, I just finished this row, sorry. What I'll do, I'm going to get you guys down further because I work on the edge of my table. Um, so I lift that up and then I'll hold this side with this hand so it always stays tight. And then what I'll do is I'll start going in from the back here and I'll pull that and I'll just pull it up and I'll do like every two depending. See how much and this way it tightens them. And I've been finding this to be a lifesaver. And it also gives me a little bit more thread to work with. But since this is pretty, I'm just going to go up to here with this one. But I think you can see how that one's raised up. That one was popping out and that one was. So once I'm done, what I'm going to do is on the back, I'm going to try and go through each of these and just try and pull up and tighten. Do you see the little stitches? There you go. Now you can see it. See the little stitches on the back? I'm going to try and tighten it up through there as well. If I have extra th thread. Um, and I don't even know where my thread went. Here it is. Let me show you real quick. Because it rolled on the floor and started unraveling. But you get a huge thick thing of thread. Which I think is awesome. Um, I do have other sewing needles that I have in case I lose this last one that I have. Um, but I would always recommend having sewing needles on hand. All right. I just dropped it. It just unraveled. I'm not touching it cause yeah, but also cover minders. I don't know. I don't have any here with me, but you can use little cover minder or metal tins with a cover minder in it. And then you can just attach this to the cover minder. I don't have cover minders with me cause I haven't been using them. I've actually been using my bees crafty corner, um, release papers. So I don't have those. They're packed up for the um, cover minders. But yeah, so this is what I'm working on. It's been a super, super fun to do. See that one? Yeah, that one. That's the one that I've got to. It annoys me. But Jackie like loves rolling her hands over it because she says it's like great um, texture. Um, yeah, I think it's texture for ADHD autism spectrum stuff uh, which okay no worries no worries kiddo 
Um, I'm not sure that's the color, but I'm going to just continue working on this. Um, how are you all doing? I hope you guys are having an awesome day. Um, we are actually, I just got, that is a D. Yep, that is one. Okay. I just, um, I'm very happy because I just became a member with our temple, which is unheard of. Um, I never thought I would be going to temple by myself without family, um, without being pushed by my parents or my dad um, to just, and we only did it for family events. And growing up, I'll just go into it because I don't know what I talked about last week, but um, we're Jewish. My dad got bar mitzvah. My mom didn't. Um, I don't think. I know my uncle and my aunt on my mom's side got bar and bat mitzvah, but for some reason my mom never did, which is kind of weird. I, I don't know why it was missed on her, but it's neither here nor there. Um, my dad did, and my dad's side of the family, all of our cousins, all of my aunts and uncles were, well, I don't have any, oh, do I have uncles? No, I didn't. I, he was the only brother. I only have aunts on her side, um, blood relatives. And um, they were all bat mitzvah and bar mitzvah. And I'm just not sure why it never passed down to me. And so I was very frustrated going to everyone's bar and bat mitzvah, my, all my cousins, um, not understanding a darn thing that they were talking about half the time. And I just grew a lot of resentment with my parent, with my dad, especially. Um, in the Jewish religion, or the Jewish faith, um, the moms teach the women and the dads teach the sons. And we never had any sons or they never had any sons as just daughters. So it was up to my mom to do all the teaching, which I think is very old school barbaric. <laughs> I'm just going to put it that way um, for the 70s because that's when I was born. And to me personally, I think if you're the one that's been bar mitzvahed, then you're the one that's that responsibility lies on to uphold the traditions of the family and to allow that same opportunity with the daughters. We never went to temple, and I don't know why. Um, I never understood that with my dad. Never, never understood why we never did anything religious other than celebrating holidays. And we didn't even celebrate holidays. We, as a family, only celebrated Hanukkah. We would go to everyone's house to celebrate the rest of the holidays. Um, we mostly would go over to my mom's sister's house and do Passover there. I don't, I can't remember who we did Rosh Hashanah with, but I know we always went over for Passover. Um, I'm going to back out a little bit because I think it's not focusing real well. Um, and it just, it really, it, I'm a, I'm a curse, so cover your ears if you don't want to hear it, but it really fucking irritated me. And I grew a lot of resentment, a lot of anger that I wasn't being taught my culture. I had people when I was in high school saying, oh, you haven't gone to Israel or are you going to Israel for graduation? And it's like when, when a lot of Jewish people graduate, they end up going to Israel. Um, everyone I know family wise has been to Israel. Um, have we? No, nope, nope, nope. And I, I'm glad because I don't think I would have been going for the right reason if I went, um, if I'm going to go there, I want to fully experience it. And, um, I think there was too much anger and resentment in me to experience it the right way. But I have been going through EMDR therapy, um, and I'm going back to it as well. I'm, yeah. <clears throat> and I touched a little bit about that for the miscarriages I had. I have to go deal with those emotions and grief, um, grief for my parents. Uh, you know, I don't experience grief because I turned off my emotions, but I'm digressing. Let me get back to my story because it's so interesting, you know, and I don't want to get on a political bandwagon with anybody or a religious bandwagon. Um, I'll probably just say this and then forget about it, if you know what I mean. 
But um, hold on one second. I gotta see if that is a purple or a brown, and I think it is a brown. Um, so anyway, so I'm glad I didn't do any studies back then, but since the EMDR therapy, I have made peace with my parents as much as I can. Um, things do bother me, but I don't have all the hatred and anger anymore. Um, there's resentment, but that, I mean, I'm always going to have that. Um, but I just, I have to keep reassuring myself and say, you know what, they they did what they did. Um, I can't change it. Um, I can't talk to them. I can't do anything about it. So let me just heal myself and move on and just accept it for what it is. Knowing that it's made me a better person, a better person to recognize things in my daughter earlier and make sure that she doesn't go through those challenges that I went through and that things are properly addressed. So one of the things is religion and I have been thinking about it for a couple years now, but I think right now because I'm doing a lot of self healing with Al Anon and my and go, you know finishing up that stage of my therapy where I can accept my parents for how they brought us up and what they did and did and didn't decide to do that I can make peace that okay well we didn't learn our religion then but nothing's hindering me from learning it now and participating. Um, so we walked into temple one day. I've been, um, out of nowhere. <laughs> I'm just like, let's go for, um, Sabbath tonight. And we went and we enjoyed, it was a female rabbi and we enjoyed her sermon. And, you know, Jackie liked the fact that there were desserts afterwards. And I had to explain what the hall, um, what the challah bread was. Hala, hala, hala. There we go. Um, and she was like, afterwards, I'm like, well, what did you think? She goes, I kind of liked it. I recognized some of the words um, in what they were singing. And I was like, yeah, some of it, because we do Hanukkah and we say that prayer during Hanukkah, but that's all she knows. Um, but I recognized some stuff growing up and I can, not knowing how to say the words, I'm very good at picking up different languages. And I was actually able to say the written part of the word. Um, I'm just trying to, um, darn off my, darn off, tie off my thread so it doesn't, um, tear, um, so it doesn't unravel. So that's what I'm just doing right now. And then I'll go back to, you can watch me suffer while I put in a new thread. But, um. That's going to be loose, though. I'm not sure how I want to do this. But, um, yeah, so she's like, I want to go back. They had such good food afterwards because they had desserts and stuff afterwards. Um, but we signed up for the membership, and we're going to go for the the high holiday. So Rosh Hashanah is coming up. And then um, – I don't know if I can, but I'm going to try and get off work Thursday. I'm not sure I can, though, because I kind of didn't give them any warning. But considering it is a Jewish holiday, I was like, well, if we get membership with the temple, I'll probably take Thursday. See if I can get time off on Thursday. Sorry, my yarn. Let me get the... No, don't go back. My, um... Yarn fell and unraveled, but it's okay because I still need it. So let me cut some yarn. I'm not going to do a long one because um, I'm finding that when I cut the pieces long that they kind of curl up like the old telephone, rotary telephones. So yeah, we don't want to do that. So I'm just going to cut this one. Um, yeah, so we're going to go for Rosh Hashanah. And um, when we went back, I think this past Friday, uh, it was a male rabbi, the, like the main rabbi. And she ended up really liking him. And she's like, yeah, when I could understand what he was saying, I liked how he, what he was saying. I was like, okay. 
So she's picking up on stuff, and I'm, I'm like, you want to go again? You know, every time I ask, you want to go again? You want to go again? She's like, yeah. Um, I said, not for the food. She goes, no, Mom, I liked it. I was like, okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm like, not just for the food, Jackie. That's not why we're here. So, you know, she'll bring her art book or what have you because she can't really, she doesn't have a long attention span. And um, she'll just do art while we're doing everything. She'll stand when she needs to stand. And I'll try and get her to read from the book when it's time for that. She'll try and participate with that. So it's just hard because, you know, I don't have anything to teach her because I really don't know. So with us being members at the temple, I'm hoping that I can get her in for some type of Jewish studies. It's a very small temple, though. Do you guys see the struggle? <laughs> it's a very small temple. So they're like very, like it's not a well-off temple at all. Um, they're trying to start children activities for the kids and doing more studies for the kids. And bringing the kids more involved. I think we only have one person, one girl that's being bought mitzvahed. Um, but other than that, it's pretty quiet. So I'm hoping they can get more activities going. For the youngins, they're doing Hanukkah, which will be fun. We'll go back for Hanukkah. And I'm just, overall, my, my main thing is just to experience it. But also, I am hoping that we can have, like, an adopted Jewish family. <laughs> If that makes sense that we can go to for the holidays, because I don't have anybody here and I don't know how to do anything for the holidays. Like, the only thing that I'm, like, really interested in doing is the haroset. The haroset. Um, which, hold on one second, let me get this. It's um, to go with the bitter herbs for Passover. Hold on one second. Um, I need to see where I'm at. I'm sorry. These are not D's. Okay, my D's. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's where I'm at. That's how I keep track of where I'm at. Um, so Haraset goes with bitter herbs for Passover. And don't get me on the story because I don't know the full story. I'm, I'm sad to say that, um, but I will. I will learn it, and I will be interested in it, and I will teach my daughter it. So, um, but that's the, like, the main thing I really enjoyed was the haraset, um, and I put it on my matzah. Like, I could eat matzah all day long. Um, matzah I'm very familiar with. We used to make matzah brai, and that was... Um, you take the matzah and you break it up into pieces and then you soak it in water or let the hot water go on it so that way it'll soften it. And um, you can, once it gets soft, you can mix it with an egg. Did I not tie my... I could have sworn I tied this. Did you guys not see me tie this? Um, you can mix it in with an egg and then put it in the... Um, in a pan and just fry it up like um, pancakes because that's it's kind of like French toast but um, actually for like French toast you can fry it up like French toast but it's flat like pancakes if that makes any sense okay let me do it this way I think that's what I need to do um, but yeah so I want to make haroset because the haroset goes with the bitter herbs to sweeten up when you eat them and it's made with apples and cinnamon, I think raisins or dates. I've got to check into it. So I I think I can make that at any time. I don't think that has to be specifically for Passover because that is, oh, you guys see the struggle? This is why it takes me so long to do this. But um, okay, what is it that I'm actually doing? All right, I guess I got it in here. All right, I have one. Let me get the other one in. Sorry. Um, I told you I get easily distracted. I guess it did not. It. I just want to put a second one in. Stay with it. You guys ever have a hard time getting your knots in the same exact space? I never am able to do that. Usually it's like 
an inch, half an inch above or below. Um, all right, let me finish getting this one in. But yeah, so I really do want to make that with her. And it lasts for like three days, so I figure I could do like a small batch. And if she likes it, great. Even better. My sister's like, yay, go stay. So proud of you. I'm like, yeah, but I want you to do it too. Um, my niece was helping out at the temple. Um, I think it was summer camp. I'm not sure what she was doing. So I'm hoping that maybe that'll get her inclined to actually go to temple. Um, but who knows? Who knows what will happen with this family? Um, oh, what else? What else? Um, oh, so Jackie, I was saying, was running for secretary. Yeah, she turned in her paper to work too late, so she's not running which is okay. Um, therapist said we need to start traveling more and getting out of the house and going to do stuff. And it's just like, there's, I really don't want to. And she's like, why don't you want to get out of the house? I said, it's just a lot of work. Like for me to leave the house, there's really nothing to do. Going to the beach, I get tired coming back. And I don't know if this is just excuses or me thinking through the process and then being too tired to actually do it. Um, I probably should take her to the beach, though. Not now, because we're in a hurricane warning right now, or tornado warning. Watch, watch, not warning, guys, sorry. Um, but I guess even in, like, fall, I can take her to the beach still. Shouldn't be an issue. I want to go fishing, um, but not the great weather to do that now either. Um, so there's... There's a few things that I do need to plan that I can do locally. It's just I have the dog, and I'm going to have to put the dog up into the kennel for the day or two. Um, so one of the trips that I do want to do is to go to South Carolina and go to Meadowville Times. She hasn't been to that before. Um, it's about a three-and-a-half-hour drive, which isn't bad because we, I think we do about three hours getting up to Virginia to go to Ikea. So, like, what's the difference? I should see if there's one in Virginia, though. Because then if I stay in Virginia, I could do an Ikea run as well. Um, and then she's like, so why don't you? And I said, well, because I got boxes in my car from the move. She goes, and why are they still in your car? And I'm like, because I don't want to unpack them, and my storage bin is full, and I still have boxes at the house I read need to reorganize, which I've slowly been doing. Not fast enough, though. And she goes, Okay. She goes, when do you want to do traveling? She goes, for fall, you can do something for fall. Um, Virginia is a fall thing because we can go up to Williamsburg. And she goes, just, can you put the dog up? And it's not like I can afford it. I technically can afford it, but I don't want to use money either. Um, I don't know. Um, and it's not that I don't want to use money. It's just that I have to worry about hotels and cost of hotels and in the back of my head, my parents are like, that's too expensive, that's too expensive. And I just don't want that in my head anymore. I want to be able to do what I want to do. Um, right now, I am think once the house is installed and we're moved in and everything is hunky-dory, which will hopefully be before next summer, um, hopefully that will have be in the house by um, Halloween, but I'm not so sure. Um, I want to be moved in before Thanksgiving, definitely. Um, I'll have the apartment here in case we need to escape <laughs> for obvious reasons. We'll have pull-out beds or blow-up mattresses or stuff. Um, but I am going to have the apartment until January, so that'll get us through the holidays in case we need a place to go and just escape the madness of my life. Um, And that's some other stuff I have to work on as well and make some phone calls about. But, yeah, a lot's going on. Um, Bunny is doing great. Oh, my God, so adorable. He's starting to follow me out the door now. And I'm like, no, 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 because our dog will... Our dog, little Carmen, is not small animal wary. Like, she gets so overzealous about stuff. Um... 
Yeah, so we let the rabbit out of the cage. I think it's chewed through so many wires of my daughter's that she's getting so pissed right now. <laughs> um, but I'm like, you know what? Lesson learned. We'll just figure out a way to keep them out of the space of the bunny. Because they're up there, but the bunny, like, pulls them down or something. I don't know. Or they fall down. Because they're on the windowsill, so I think we just need to get, like, a little shelf and put everything on the shelf. Um, maybe it'll be easier when she actually has a, a bed off the floor. Because right now she just likes sleeping on the mattress. So I'm like, uh, we need to think about getting you a bed. Like, an actual frame bed. I did get rid of her baby furniture. I'm so mad, but it just wasn't happening. Um, her crib was supposed to convert into a bed and it was a twin bed though. Not, I don't think it was a full, I think it was going to be a twin bed and she needs a full bed. Um, I don't know. I, I was very upset about getting rid of it because my parents got it for her and the whole intention was for her to use it. But because of her brain and the functioning of her brain, like we went through a regular bed with her with drawers on the side. We went through a day bed with her. We went through a loft bed, which she, but she doesn't really sleep in her bed. She likes to sleep on the couch or in my room, which is fine, but I need to find a bed that she likes. Um... I have a feeling, though, my daughter will change her mind in two years. But I'm thinking if we can just keep her room very, very basic and very clean, then she may do better sleeping in it. I don't know if that's the issue or not. One, two, three. Hold on. Okay, those are whites. But that's the goal when we move back. We'll do an Ikea. I love Ikea. Um, I'm not sure about the bed, though. I think the bed, we might try to find someplace local for that. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm getting the Ikea Billy bookcases, and I'm going to line them up around the room in a craft room. And then I'm going to get the Alexa drawers. Thank God my Alexa's not on right now, because she would be going crazy with me saying that. And then... um. I'll get the Alexa drawers for storage and then the, I like kitchen countertops for the tape, the top of the, the desk and I'll work with that. She wants a sewing machine. I kind of want a sewing machine too. So I may get her a basic sewing machine to work with. And then we're just doing clear bins for everything that she can just dump stuff in. Um, they've got these cool wire bins, um, wire rolling cart with these huge wire mesh drawers. <clears throat> and, um, I, those work great for my, um, for me because I can just dump all my yarn in the bins and I can dump all my diamond painting stuff in when I need to and just not worry about it. And I'll just know exactly where it is. Diamond painting is in this bin and, you know, all the waxes and accessories and tools, um, drills can go in another bin in bags and I can just dump them in there and. Um, do I have two, eight, one, hold on one sec, one, two, three, two, three, seven. okay. Um, but yeah, so, whew, I'm exhausted though. I have two Al-Anon meetings I'm leading tonight. Or hosting, I should say, where I get to do from start to finish. So that'll be fun. We've got therapy today for Jackie. Um, my eye got super swollen. I think they said it was like cellulitis. I didn't go to the doctor, but I had a couple of people tell me it was like cellulitis or something. I put on some mascara, and it's not pink eye, and it's not. There's nothing wrong with my eye. I think what happened was that my eyelashes got infected. In the, in the hair follicle of the lash and it just it swelled up so bad um so doing what I do I just plucked out those two eyelashes and then it started reducing the swelling immediately 
Um, that wasn't what I should have done. So now today it's just a little red mark. Um, it's a little dry due to the um, reduction of the, the swelling. But it looks so much better. And my, my therapist is like, you got to go to urgent care. You need to make a plan, commit to it, take care of yourself. And, and yeah, should I? Yeah. Because it was like, it that was like the fourth day yesterday. Um, but now that it's doing better and it's not hurting anymore, um, I think I'm okay. And I'm going to be stubborn and not go. But yeah, I do know how dangerous that can be. But don't worry. If it if it doesn't go down or doesn't start getting better again or in flames again, I will definitely go to urgent care. But I think with it opening and reducing the swelling, we're good. Because I put some hot water on it. Or a warm compress to relieve it. And it worked. Um, what is going on for next week I don't know next week Rosh Hashanah like I said if you're Jewish happy Rosh Hashanah early Rosh Hashanah um, I don't know from there maybe I should just not talk and do this and just put on some nice music for you guys that you can react to oh I can tell you some stuff so um and this might help you guys in everyday life as well, because I'm finding Al-Anon, um, if you don't know, it's for people who know people who are alcoholics or dealing with alcoholics with friends, family, partners, whatever. And I'm not really going to go into my story, um, but there's a lot of lessons I'm learning from it. Um, and I just wanted to share some here. So one of the lessons I'm learning is just, you can't, if you can't control things then there's no point in spending time on it. And that's not exactly how they say it in al -Anon, but I'm summing it up. Hold on one second. Okay. So let me back up because not many of you may know what I'm referring to. So, um, and I'm just going to pause from doing this for a second. Cause this is like something I've held onto and I feel very strongly about, and I've been practicing in my everyday life. I don't know how it's going to be handled when my qualifier comes back. But that's besides the point for right now. I'm just living in the moment. Um, but the lack of control um, is the idea of not being able to control a situation. Um, recognizing that we cannot change or manage someone else's behavior um, when dealing with any type of a situation. Um and accepting our limits and detaching from the situation, but detaching through kindness, through love, through support. Um, so basically, um, accepting limits. Imagine you're stuck in traffic, um, which happens to me all the time during all the time. Um, not as much now, but I can relate to it from back when I lived in California, which is why I won't move to California, but it's rush hour. Okay. Um, you're late for work. You're for me most of the time. It's trying to get to the airport, um, and I usually get very frustrated, very anxious, very worried, very agitated. Um, but I have to look at it, and I'm like, the last time I was there, I was actually able to do this. I looked at it, and I was like, look, I can't control what's going on. I can only find ways to try and go around cars to go faster. <laughs> But I can't control the traffic, okay? It's going to happen. Worst case scenario is I get another plane because I can't make it to the airport. Um, that's worst case scenario. So it's like, it, it's a big deal, but it's not a big deal. You know, it's not like it's a life or death situation. Um, but I can't control it. So I have to like breathe through it and try and just self-manage myself. And... um. And just know that I will get to where I need to go safely. That's the whole point is just to get there safely. Um, if you're referring to relationships, friendships, relationships, um, you can't change their behaviors either. Um, no matter how much you try, if you want them to be nicer to you, if you want them to show you love and affection, if you want them getting you more gifts or flowers, you cannot control that. Um, 
but recognizing that lack of control helps you decide how you're going to react and what choices you make. Like, are you going to deal with it? Are you going to talk about it? Or are you going to sit and wait until the situation calms down or until it's the right time to talk about it? Is it, are you needing to talk about it? Like, or is this just something? Um, I don't know if I'm making sense. It's, it's hard to explain, but it's, for me, I have to put up barriers or boundaries, I think is the word. So I'm starting to learn how to put up boundaries. And right now those boundaries are easy um, or easier than I know they will be when my qualifier comes back. Um, the other thing is detaching with love. <laughs> so um, it just basically means stepping back emotionally while you still care for the person. So I'm just going to back out just a little bit. Um, so you basically, what I have to do for my situation, because my situation is very verbal, um, I have to not engage. Um, if you don't want to interact in a respectful way, then I, I don't want to talk right now. You can, you know, I don't want to be around you right now. I don't want to engage with you. I'm not going to answer your questions. So what, you know, with my boundaries, if I put up those boundaries, then I don't engage at that point. Um, I respect that if you want to drink or for me, I'm just going to refer to drinking, but if you want to keep acting this way, that's fine. If you feel that you need to keep acting this way, but I'm going to step away from the conversation. And when I feel the time is right, I will come back and we can discuss it further. So it's just like... If you, you know, if you have a difficult situation with someone, you can always say that. Um, hopefully they'll be respectful and say, okay, well, maybe I need to calm down too. Um, you never know. But always talk to the person. Just talk to them in the right way. You know what I mean? Um, if someone's going through a tough time, but they don't want to seek help, hence me with the doctor, not wanting to go to the doctor, all you can do is express your concern, offer support, but it's their decision if they want to get help or not. Um, my sister um, needs help. Anyway, um, my husband needs help. <laughs> we'll go that route. <laughs> but I can't keep, I can't push him to get the help. And I'm not seeing a way that things are going to get better. So I have to detach with love. Um, and acknowledge that he can do what he wants, um, just not in my presence. Um, if there's someone's making poor financial choices, all you can do is provide advice. You can't force them to manage their money differently. They're going to do what they want to do. Um, and I would like highly recommend seeing when someone's complaining to you. This is one thing that I've really had a hard time learning because I try and fix things or I try and problem solve because that's how my analytical brain works. And um, it's not your place to solve their problems. Um, it's not your place to give them funding to help them out of a situation. Um, so, yeah, it, it's hard because I do try and problem solve. And unfortunately, I can't. So, um, yeah, I, I just wanted to end with that. I don't know if I made any sense to anybody, but I, right now I'm working on my boundaries and, um, learning how to take care of me because I've never done that before. Um, which is why I think I'm getting a little bit more up on my whipping chats and doing new things <laughs> like this. Um, I did go live the other day and that was so much fun because I'm trying to work on my social anxiety um, and interacting with people, um, being able to talk with them and stuff. So just if, if I'm on a live and I'm not really interacting much, it's, I just don't know how, um, and that's like neurodivergency right there. Okay, hold on one second, because one, two, or it's my neurodivergency. Um, where am I? One, two, one, C. Oh, that's a C. Oops. 
think I've been putting in the wrong colors over here, but it's okay. Let's back out and get that one off because that was the wrong color. See what happens when I do this and talk? These are actually C's. They don't look like a C, but whatever. Okay. Can we get that out now? Which way is that one going? It's going through here. Hold on one sec, guys. In case you need to see what I'm doing. I have to frog frog this. Um, I don't even know where I was right now. Oh yeah, so yeah, I'm I'm trying to work on my social skills. Um I think I talked about this the last time too is that the way my brain works is that once I get an answer for something, I'm usually done with the conversation. Um and I think with school, that came around with school as well. Because I just wanted to know how to get the answer. I didn't need the whole explanation. I just need to know how to do the formula. Um, I didn't even want the, like, I don't even, I didn't even, I wanted to be able to write what I was learning, not memorizing, like, facts and stuff. And back then, you had essays, but why isn't this working? I, I think I'm going in it the wrong way. Hold on, guys. I'm so sorry. I might just put you on a brief pause while I figure this out. Do, do, do. All right. Let me do it this way. Because we are getting absolutely nowhere with this. All right. I'm going to put you on a pause real quick. Okay. I fixed it. It was actually stuck under one of the um, the loops from the prior prior so underneath. Um, but yeah, so I'm just working on that. Um, and we'll see how we do. We will see how we do. Um, I definitely want to get it under under the way for the retro event this year because I don't want to have. I want to be able to go live every day and not have those hindrances and I want to make it a fun event so um, if I can get my weapon chats up that'll be so much easier for me eventually to transition over to it so just be patient with me guys don't take it personally um, if I see monotone or anything like that that's just how my brain works I'm excited I'm appreciative um, I love doing this I love interacting with you all I love the fact that you guys inspire me um, to be better, to want to try new things, to interact with, um, and I really appreciate you guys being out there um, as well and sharing your stories because it, it takes a lot for someone to come on social media where for the whole world to see and share their stories. And I really give everybody credit for being brave to do that. But I also think it helps people in the community sometimes, especially if you're going through something, to say, hey, I'm not the only one, right? So, anywho, I think I'm going to wrap it up because I've got a meeting starting in the next half hour. And my alarm is probably going to start going off soon, which it is. Um, hopefully it doesn't seem to be interfering with the video, which is great. And I'm already at like 55 minutes anyway. Um, so I will try and see if I can get some background music on this, but seeing how long this video is, sometimes that's hard, but I hope you guys had fun listening. I hope it was relaxing. If you guys have done beaded embroidery, I would love to see projects tag me in them, whether it's Instagram or here. I'm mostly on Facebook, um, but feel free to tag me. I would love to see them. If I, um, Got you interested in pulling yours out or ordering one or doing one? Great. Let me see what you're working on because I only know of two companies. I'm trying to work with another company. They contacted me, so we'll see where that goes to. Um, but I'm loving this. I may put this on a hyperspeed, but I don't under I don't know how you can hyperspeed this because you won't be able to see what's going on. It's not like diamond painting because this is so much slower than diamond painting. So like an hour of this, you might only get like a row done. You know what I mean? 
jelly bean. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. You guys have a great morning, afternoon, or evening. Catch you on the flip side. Take care of yourself. Stay true. Stay true. Stay smart. Stay wise. And hopefully anything we talked about, I hope it's helped or giving you something, a new project to work on. So love you guys. Have a great week. And I will talk to you on the flip side. Bye.